British Columbia has the greatest diversity of Indigenous languages in Canada, but they are in extreme danger of extinction. Only 15% of Aboriginal children in Canada are learning their mother tongue, an alarming statistic when experts agree that language is the strongest link to cultural continuity and the future well-being of Native people. First Peoples recognizes the success and longevity of the Language Nest model and highly endorses it as one of the best language revitalization programs available. So the best strategy that community, First Nations communities can do for language now is go into immersion. Develop immersion programming with the children in your schools, um, in your workplace. You have, we have to incorporate immersion that's the only way you're going to uh, revitalize your, your language. There's no other strategy that's going to work. You could document your language, you could develop all these dictionaries, but who's going to be learning? The elders are passing, the speakers are passing, and the children aren't learning. It is, we don't have much time. It's all our time that we spent doing this work of documenting, there's going to be no speakers. Chief Atom School was the first to adopt the Language Nest model and has become a shining example of the success of the program. Um, we started our first Language Nest in 19. 87, I believe, so we are sort of the longest standing language nest in the province and maybe even Western Canada. From the beginning, I think a lot of people were, were really wondering, you know, what, what is a language nest, what is immersion? And um, over time, a lot of people have said, you know, gee, you know, I can't believe these children understand what you're saying, or I, you know, I can't believe these children can speak the language, you know. so. They're starting to see that, yes, it works for teaching language, but then now we're seeing a lot of our children that went to the original language nest years ago. You know, they're, they're graduated from high school and they're going on to post-secondary. They're going on to a lot of different, uh, you know, opportunities. And they're becoming the leaders that people are looking towards, you know, the role models. And they're saying, okay, you know, if it can stem from something, you know, that's a small idea like a language nest at a young age, but then it grew into Chief of Tom School, the immersion setting. And I think people are starting to notice it, like not only in our community, but, but elsewhere to say, you know, why don't we try this? Because if it can work for one community, it might be able to work for another. I think the, in working with children, and probably working with just about everyone because I remember being a student of the language as an adult and just bringing song and anything music into into it has a has a relaxing effect but it also gets it upbeat you can use song to do transition you can use songs to um, put a book to songs um, just about anything can be put to music and I I just find that that children really respond to it, that, that their favorite books are always the ones that have, you know, a song to it. When I moved back home um, and I helped start the language nest, I, I did eventually go to my mother and say, you know, Mom, you didn't do this for me, but I really, you know, think you owe me something here. And I said, so can you do this for my grandson, for your grandson? Can you do this for my son? And she said, oh, you know, like when you put it that way, she said, well, like, you know, I'll give you one year, I think she gave us to begin with, you know, I'll dedicate myself for one year and sort of the rest is history. 
who has squashed Yilgatwa and Michelle Nisimat Jean to start in the Slakwa Suhwapmaka. If you know your language and you know who you are, then you really can say Suhwapmaka. I am Suhwap, Suhwapmaka. I ask all your leaders and chiefs to really look at yourselves and look at look at us all adults and see how are we truly first nations please help your families to start programs little programs to return the language bring back the language the language nest model is a full language immersion approach originally developed by the Maori of New Zealand and the native peoples of Hawaii it focuses on ages zero through six, a crucial time in child development in which children absorb and internalize language. Experts agree that this is the key age group to target for success in language immersion. The nest, a metaphor for family, symbolizes the interactions and engagement of all family members in speaking their indigenous language. The language needs to live within the home, that the nest itself will not be the end all to, to create a living language. It's a start, it's the life support for, um, for your language. But the ultimate goal is to have our families, intergenerational, living within the home, to speak as an ohanai, as a family. You yourself, as native speakers, as native educators, do something about it. You're not gonna wait for the other person to come and do it but take it upon yourself and do it quickly because of the fact that time is of essence and at the same, you have to videotape these people, make sure that you have something solid for the next generation to hold on to because if not, if not, you're just gonna die. Literally, your language will die. I love children. <laughs> That's why I did the, I've worked with children for so long. <laughs> I wanted a whole bunch of kids. All I got is two, two daughters, <laughs> which I love dearly. I believe that the children should learn the day-to-day, -day, like, so you can go and have a conversation with people. I mean, you don't go and talk to an elder and just talk about animals. They'll ask you how you are and, you know, most Elders, they'll ask you, who's your parents? And that means you've got to say your parents' name, your grandparents. If you don't have that, you don't have the roots. But for sure, that the parents should try to learn too. That way, the children will keep it going. For our kids, was we wanted them to be fluent in our language, we didn't want them just to know a little bit. We wanted them to understand jokes, be able to tell stories, be, be, be totally fluent, and also know the cultural knowledge because it's not just about language, it's about cultural knowledge because we have 10,000 years of, of ecological sustainability and, and good governance, so we can learn a lot from that and that's that's, that comes part and parcel with the language. The challenge is there in terms of the diversity of languages, but we have to remember that language nests happen at the community level. So where the challenges come in is more around sharing of curriculum resources. So for instance, if we're funding, looking for funding sources to support communities to create curriculum, for their language and S programs. It's only going to go as far as the communities who share that language group.
At the same time, templates can be shared. So if people are creating storybooks or creating games, that those things can be shared and then adapted in the language. So it also doesn't have to be a huge barrier if we're supported not only to create the curriculum resources, but then to create templates out of those resources that could be then shared across the province. I believe we only have one fluent speaker left in our community and you know when we start learning language in 94 we had 20 elders right I just feel like we need to really start getting serious about reviving our language okay this is the yearly curriculum and it's from September to June so each month it tells um, what words are being taught in the songs and they receive an audio cassette tape along with it it's, I don't know, it's just a time for happy time. I don't know, there's a lot of people that um, um, are getting more involved in reviving the language. And, you know, when, you know, we have to go out and sing, you know, I let it, all the people know that, you know, we're revitalizing the language here at the Stalin Nation Head Start, you know, program. You know, we're revitalizing it with the families and the children. So the, uh, the parents help the children or the children help the parents. Papa and I went to residential school together on my first night in school. I'll never ever forget. I think I was four or five and I didn't have a bed yet. So they put me in her bed. <laughs> So we've known each other since, and I think we've both always had the, the love instilled in us for the language, that it was something we wanted and needed. We got ridiculed for going back to school at our age, but we just went anyway and kept going. Papala gave up her job. I eventually ended up giving up my work to work in the language, and we hung in there together through now and I'm so happy and proud that we ended up here together because I guess it was meant. In Helkmalem, level one, and my granddaughter came home saying words to me and I didn't understand them. It gave me the confidence to be able to stand up in a classroom and teach. That I didn't have that before. And I think uh, I had the ability to teach children. And I followed through with that. With the language nest, it's almost like these little birds hatching and you're going to open up just like little flowers. They're going to grow to eat them. They're going to grow to be beautiful adults. And that is the nest. 
that at this course, a lot of the that the children um, need to eat course, start to stuck at the language course, it's excellent this course can eat So with setting them in, which we call the language nest, which is um, school age, Ela, which is the nest, you're setting in those children in, in there and you're taking them by the hand and then teaching them of the ways, trying to bring the old ways back. And within listening to that, they could start to pick it up because it's very repetitious in everything we do, everything we say. So these children are so natural that they pick it up so easily. And it makes my job easier because it's in their hearts, it's in their soul, it's in their bodies. And just watching them and hearing them sing, um, I, I just love the language. Um, I'm very much part of my culture and I go to any lanes to get there and still include myself. So in watching these children start to understand our language, my mom said, you're not a Juanita. And she told me all the time, you're not a white person. Juanam. You have to listen. She used to tell me all the time, you got to learn your own language. So I think when I see these children start to respond in, as to what I'm saying, what I'm doing, and they're catching on, I just like, oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's, I can't say enough about those children. And it's very emotional for me to watch them because they are learning, they're grown, and they just could be beautiful people. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. The successes and creative approaches to integrating the language nest model are a testament to individual communities and their passion for language revitalization and immersion. The language nest model works. Any community can be successful and get the ongoing support they need. We say a lot of lut and ki and white and as well uh, at every night I al we always tell each other has quest huin hamink which is good night I love you. The benefits of the nest program from zero to six is uh, it really instills the language in uh, well my kids' lives because. Uh, my daughter, her being eight years old, there's words that she'll never, ever forget because she's been in the program since she was one. They're very proud of speaking their language right now. They're very excited and you know, telling me what what's what, and um, it's very exciting for me, you know. We sing songs together, and we count, we do our colors, and just knowing that she knows all these words and all this stuff, it makes me want to learn more as well. schools came in they took it away and they took a lot more too but the language was something that was very it, it's like the drumbeat too of our nation it's kind of funny you know, like I'll come home and you know, I'll, I'll say some words and she, she just laughs at me she's like she's like no dad that's for my teachers my teachers say that <laughs> sometimes she won't let me speak it's kind of funny <laughs> <laughs>